the number one reason to wait on buying the M1 MacBook Pro for software engineering is, should you get an M1 MacBook Pro for software development? What's up, I'm James, I'm a self-taught programmer, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about the M1 MacBook Pro, the good, the bad, the ugly of using it for software development. I recently purchased it, and this is based on my personal experiences. So over the years, I've been able to work with a lot of different versions of the MacBook Pro as a front-end software engineer. Recently, I purchased the M1 MacBook Pro, and this is the first thing that I really noticed when compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro that I use for work, is that the M1 MacBook Pro is super, super quiet. Now, I did opt for the upgrade where I got 16 gigabytes of RAM because I also do video editing and I wanted to make sure that I was future-proofing it as much as possible. I probably would have gotten more if that was available, but that was not an option. But there are certain tasks that when I'm using my older MacBook Pros, that they just rev up and sound like they're gonna take off and the fans are just whirring and just, it's really, really noisy and stuff. The M1 MacBook Pro has been super, super quiet. And I've really appreciated that, especially if I'm gonna be doing anything where I'm gonna be recording, stuff like that. It's just been beautiful in that regard. And in case you didn't know, the M1 does have a way to run uh, applications that were designed for an Intel-based uh, MacBook Pro and that is using Rosetta 2. Now, that's great in theory, but one of the big problems is that some applications really struggle with this. When I was migrating stuff off of my old laptop to my new M1 MacBook Pro, I used Apple's utility, which transferred files and applications from my old Mac to my new Mac. Well, it brought over Chrome that was Intel-based, and that was a horrible experience. I'm someone who likes to have tabs open. I'll have hundreds of tabs open. I'll leave tabs on Chrome open until my computer crashes. And I couldn't even have 10 tabs open without it being horribly slow. As I typed, the keys were just like, oh, just really slow. I have another video on that if you wanna look at more details on that. But at the end of the day, that came down to Rosetta 2 and that application was horrible and I ended up finding out that they have a whole nother version of Chrome now that is made specifically for the M1 MacBook Pro. And so uninstalling Chrome and putting that on there, uh, the new version of Chrome on there completely fixed that problem. So just be cautious that if you're doing any kinds of migrations and stuff, you might need to go out and find a different version of an application that is actually uh, tailored specifically to the M1 MacBook Pros. Otherwise you might encounter some unexpected performance issues. Now, unfortunately, some applications just aren't there yet and will have some serious performance issues. And as a programmer, this could really affect you. I found that it's a pretty good experience for a lot of the you know, editing uh, IDs and softwares and stuff like that. But a deal killer for a lot of people is that Docker has had some problems and there are ways you can kind of work around it and try and get it running through a very roundabout way that is not ideal and and stuff so until they actually put out a version that is friendly to you know the m1 then you know that might potentially be a deal killer for you but in general what i've found is that it has worked well for a lot of other things and i haven't really noticed much of in the way of like performance gains when it comes to actually programming because i really don't think most of what we're doing is taxing enough on you know, the computer, you know, to really notice a ton of difference. Now, where I really have noticed a lot of difference has been on things that are related more to front end development. If you're doing things with applications like the Adobe Creative Cloud or other, you know, video, uh, audio, image processing type stuff that is a lot more intensive and stuff, that is where I have actually really noticed a huge improvement on the M1. In fact, when it comes to video editing, it was definitely significantly faster than my last MacBook Pro. When I compared them side to side, rendering times on this uh, MacBook Pro M1 with the M1 chip are about twice that of my last laptop, and I'm able to have multiple layers of 4K footage and other animations and stuff, and it is just like working flawlessly. Whereas with my previous MacBook Pro, which was a 2020 model that I had purchased a couple months before the M1s were announced and ended up giving to my wife, 
but that one would actually start chugging once I had more than one layer of uh, 4K footage or if I did any kind of like uh, motion graphics or things like that. Whereas the M1 is just like handling it really beautifully and is really fast rendering. But when it comes to the PC, it is noticeably faster than the PC. And so that actually freed me up to let go of that PC because I'm not really a gamer and I was primarily using that for editing. And now I'm able to get some really high performance video renders while being able to still have consistency across uh, uh, keyboards and stuff. Because that was one of the things that was starting to annoy me was switching back and forth between you know different keyboards and stuff. So now all of my uh, keyboards are like, you know, the Apple Magic Keyboard and the laptops. So they all just pretty much match for like muscle memory and stuff like that. That's kind of a pet peeve that I have. So you will notice some definite improvements with the M1 if you're doing more visual uh, aspects of development. Now, one of the things I really like in these newer uh, MacBook Pros and stuff that are coming out is reintroducing the escape key and stuff that they have, you know, kept a legitimate tangible escape button instead of having it as part of the touch bar. I personally think they should just get rid of the touch bar and give me back the other keys. But here's something that I actually really do miss about the previous 2020 MacBook Pro, and that is that on these new ones, there are only two USB-C ports. And so I've ended up having to go get a CalDigit hub, which is really nice. And it actually like works really, really well for a lot of things. But I definitely wish that the M1s still had four USB-C ports on the laptop. I imagine that's probably one of the things that they're keeping to differentiate the you know larger versions of the MacBook Pros that will probably come out in the near future. The next thing that really annoyed me was that I keep having problems with the mouse disconnecting. I have an Apple Magic Mouse you know connected in Bluetooth and several times a day it will disconnect and it reconnects. Fortunately it reconnects fairly quickly but it is definitely disruptive when it happens. But it's something that I've been willing to live with in exchange for the performance, especially when it comes to like video editing and stuff like that. So my number one reason for upgrading to the M1 MacBook Pro was for those benefits on video editing and to be able to use the latest version of the editing software that I really like to use and to get some extra powerful features. So I don't have a lot of regrets on making that decision. Now, to be clear, this is my personal laptop and I still have my work laptop for most of my work as you know, a software engineer for another company. And that is one of the older MacBook Pros. I am not going to be encountering a lot of these problems and I can work around some of these problems a lot easier. If, however, you are planning to upgrade and use this laptop for your primary programming machine, you really need to consider the challenges, especially if you're using something like Docker, or there might be some other applications that have uh, some issues while we're waiting for those you know, apps to catch up and to you know, support and, and work better with this chipset. So if you're in that situation, I actually recommend that you might consider holding off on the M1. But once those are addressed, then the M1s are definitely a huge improvement over the older versions and will definitely be great machines. And as I said, I'm not a gamer, and so I actually let go of uh, my custom-built PC because I now have something that is smaller, more portable, and is uh, able to you know, do everything I need for video editing. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, check out some of these other videos, and I will see you in the next one. Lates.